The human body is an interesting and wonderful mechanism. Think of all it allows us to do. Run, jump, sit, stand, walk, any number of different movements. From very simple ones to very complex. You know, many of the things the human body can do would not be possible except for the basic framework of the body, the skeleton. We all have a skeleton. You can feel portions of it where they come close to the undersurface of the skin, at the wrists, uh, the knuckles. Say, the fluoroscope will give us a clearer picture. Now, I'll turn out the light and you watch my right hand. the human skeleton. Here it is. A group of about 200 bones and sizes, directly or indirectly connected to the spine which supports it. The ribs, the shoulders, the upper extremities, including the arms and hands, the skull, the hips, and the lower extremities, including the legs and feet. Now that is the complete human skeleton, a group of bones. Now let's look more closely at the important parts. We'll begin with the spine, or spinal cup. It is made up of small bones called vertebrae. Together, the bones of the spine can move quite a bit. See how they interlock. Movement and support, the two main functions of the spine. Now, Let's look at the ribs. The ribs form a protective cage. They protect your heart and lungs and the other vital organs within your thorax. Protection. That's the main function of the ribs. Now, let's look at the shoulder girdle. It consists of two long, sturdy bones in front called clavicles, and two flat shoulder blades behind, called scapula. The shoulder girdle gives extra protection to the vital organs. Watch. Picture yourself carrying a box on one shoulder. The ribs are not moved, and your vital organs not disturbed. Extra protection. That's one of the functions of the shoulder girdle in the human body. Attached to the ends of the shoulder girdle are the arms. There is a ball and socket joint at the shoulder. Because of this joint, the arm can move in almost any direction. The upper arm has a single long bone, the humerus. Now we'll just turn it like this. There is a joint at the elbow which operates like a hinge. You can see the type of action this joint permits. The lower arm has two long bones, the radius and ulna. The joint at the ends of the radius and ulna allow for twisting and turning. Notice how the radius is rolled over the ulna. A 
Attached to these are the wrist and hand bones. Many small bones are here. Movement depends on the presence of various joints. When they all work together, many movements are possible, including those which permit us to pick up articles and hold them. This is the most movable part of the skeleton. Movement. That's the principal function of the arms and hands in the human skeleton. Now notice this. The shoulder girdle, arms and hands, are similar to the hip or pelvic girdle, legs and feet. The hip girdle gives extra protection. At the sides are ball and socket joints, which connect it to the upper leg bone or femur. The leg has one upper bone and two lower bones, the fibula and tibia, separated by a hinge joint at the knee. It's similar to the arm in structure. And the ankles and feet resemble the wrists and hands in their joint and bone structure. And the whole structure is capable of great variety in movement. See how the knee joints allow movement. See how the feet support the body. See their flexibility. Motion, support, and protection. All three of these functions are performed by the lower part of the skeleton. Now let's consider another part of the skeleton, the skull. It is similar to a strong spherical case made of bone. It is solid and immovable, except at the jaw, which allows for talking and eating. It serves to protect such delicate organs as the brain and eyes. Protection the primary function of the skull. Well, now you've seen something about the skeleton. You know, of course, that it can function only in cooperation with the muscles, ligaments, tendons, nerves, and other parts of the body as a whole. Remember, it is built up around the spine. The spine's primary functions are support and movement. The ribs help protect the organs in the upper part of the trunk. The shoulder girdle gives extra protection to the top of the body. The arms and hands help in movement. The hip girdle helps protect the lower part of the body. The legs and feet help in support and movement. And the skull protects the delicate brain, the eyes, the ears and other organs it contains. There are similarities between the shoulders, arms, and hands, and the hips, the legs, and the feet. There are joints that allow movement, such as the movement of the spine, of the shoulder, elbow, lower arm, and hand, of the knees, of the ankles, and feet, and toes. There is more about the skeleton you'll want to learn because it is such an important part of the human body. The basic framework which offers protection, furnishes support, and permits movement.